Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profotex Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning MySQL Trigger Tutorial for beginners. This is our part 3. Inside this video session guys, we will discuss about syntax declaration of trigger as well as we will define our first trigger. Let's start understand about syntax declaration of any trigger inside our phpMyAdmin. So back to next step. Now in order to create a new trigger, we use the create trigger statement. Inside this, we are going to use called the create trigger. As we have seen in our MySQL stored processor tutorial that using create processor statement, actually we can define our new stored processor. So in the same way, we are going to use called create trigger. Now here, as we can see that the com complete syntax of creating a trigger is here. Now let's see that if we want to create that, so we need to use called create trigger as the statement. We have to next pass about the trigger name, trigger time and the trigger event. What basically these parameters are? If we go to the next step, trigger name. As we had discussed in part 2 that while making any trigger name and naming convention, we have to pass our trigger activation time. Next we have to pass our table name and finally we have to pass our trigger event back here. So here we have to pass the trigger name. This is the concatenation of our trigger activation time, table name as well as trigger event. So inside this trigger time, we have to pass either after and before. If you go here, so trigger activation time, it means that before and after. These basically means that at what time we actually we can fire or we want to fire our trigger. If we want to delete some data, so before that, if we want to take the logs, so we are going to use call the before here. If we want to do certain operations after updation, after insertion, after deletion, then we will, we will use called after trigger time. Now inside the next parameter, we have to pass our trigger event. This is all about our DML statement, something we have to pass called insert, update and delete. Back to syntax. Now after creating the first line, next we have to pass on and the table name. This is the table actually we are going to specify. On this table, actually we are going to make this trigger. Now next, we have to line for each row and inside this begin and end block, we have to write our logics as well as our trigger body section. So this is very basic about the syntax declaration of creating a new trigger. While going through videos of this playlist, we are going to add more parameters in our upcoming videos inside this create trigger. Inside this video or for some upcoming videos, we are going to make about the basic triggers for our DML statements. Now let's say that if we want to declare or create any trigger inside our application, so what basically syntax we have to write? If I copy this code, open a new tab and pasting it here, this is only about the syntax declaration. Let's say that. I want to create a trigger and let's say that it will run, let's say before and let's say that we have a table something called messages and we want after delete. So let's say that this is delete statement. Now this is our activation time, table name and the DML statement. So we, we are going to make a trigger, the name itself clears that we are going to make a trigger which basically fires before delete operation. After the name of trigger, we have to pass our trigger activation time. So we want to activate this trigger before delete. So here we have to pass before. Either we can write into lowercase or we can prefer something into uppercase. No matter inside phpMyAdmin. So this is trigger activation time. Next we have to pass trigger event. Here we have to pass our DML statement. So we want that before deletion, this trigger will be activated. So I am going to pass, let's say delete here. Next we have to pass the table name. So here we have the table name called messages. For each row, this is the line actually we need to write. And inside this begin and add block, we have to write our logic. So let's understand about creating a trigger inside our phpMyAdmin. 
So back here, let's create a database to actually learn about the triggers. So let's say mysql underscore triggers. This is a newly created database. If I press enter, successfully we have created that. Now go inside database, I am to create a table and let's say users. It will contain let's say 5 columns. Inside this, let's say that the first column we have an id, name, email, phone number and let's say status. This should be varchar 50 characters in length, varchar 50 characters in length varchar let's say 15 characters in length and finally I'm going to specify called the status and it is of int type and the default value let's say I'm to define for this one value and rest all the columns contain the null value and the first id column should be auto increment it means that it should be primary key for this table now if I press go button or save button Successfully, we have created our table called users table. Let's insert some data inside this table. So, I am to click on insert and let's say that this is our first user. Email is something dummy value. After email address, let's pass about the dummy mobile number and this is the first record we have created. Press go button. Successfully, we have inserted our first data inside this users table. Go to browse section. This is my PHMI admin error. Now I'm to copy this row and let's say that I'm to change some detail and I'm to clone this data one more time. Press enter. Successfully, we have inserted another row inside this table. So click on copy. Again, I'm going to insert one more row. So let's say that Ashish and this is three. Press enter successfully we have inserted and again click on copy and let's say that one more record and successfully we have created four records inside this table what basically we want inside this video let's say that we are going to delete any row from this table after deletion we want to make some backup before deleting that Let's say that if I open SQL tab into a new tab and directly if I delete any record, let's say delete from users table where id equal to 4. If I press enter, successfully we have deleted that. Go to table, reload this page and if I go again to our database table and as we can see that inside this table no record exists with id 4. But what basically we want by the help of triggers, we want that before deletion, we want to take backup of deleted data or old data inside a backup table before deleting that. So for making logs or history of data, we have to make a backup table. So if I copy this users table, go to SQL tab and let's say that so create table and the table name. I want to copy the structure or the create statement code for this table. So copy all the codes. Back to SQL tab, pasting it here and I want to make let's say users logs and if I press go button, go to database and as we can see that we have now two tables. This is users which basically contains all the original data. On deleting, we want that to take backup before that and we will store all the data inside this users logs table. So if I click on this table, right now there is no data inside this table. Now I want to create a trigger. So go inside users log or just inside the database. If I click on the SQL tab and let's say that delimiter, here delimiter ends and inside this I am to define let's say create trigger and here we have to write our trigger name. So for that before we need to specify our trigger activation time. So we want let's say before 
underscore and the user stable underscore and we have to write the DML operation so we want to take at the delete next we have to pass our trigger activation time so it should be before and the DML statement something called delete operation next we have to pass on and the table name so the table name something called users and after this line we have to add for each row now this is the syntax actually we need to follow now the next we have to define our main block of body and something called begin and end block now inside this we have to define our trigger so let's say that while deleting we want to take the back off of that user and insert into our logs table so let's say insert into let's say users logs table and the column we have something called name email phone and the status and i'm going to specify all the values now here we have to actually insert our old values before deletion so we have a keyword to take the old values of our records so let's say old dot name old dot email old dot phone and finally all dot status all we have done now by using this old keyword actually we are going to fetch our old data before deletion and we are going to insert inside this users logs table successfully we have done now if i press go button and i think that we have some error and error is that unknown column called status and if you go at the top and this is the unknown column defined here so it should be status these are the columns basically we are taking from the users table and these are the columns of our users logs table so we are just going to copy all these values and pasting or inserting inside this table again pressing go button successfully as we can see that we had created our first trigger back to our database click on the users table now let's say that we are going to delete any record from this table so before deletion if I open our users logs table and right now there is no data inside this table let's say that we are going to delete one record from this table so open up SQL tab into a new tab and let's say that delete from users table where id equal to and let's say that id equal to 2 so if i press enter button so successfully we have deleted if i go to original table reload this page now inside this table we don't have id of 2 now again back to our logs table reload this page now as we can see that inside our logs table we have now all data what actually we have deleted again if we delete any row again from that table go to SQL tab and let's say that delete from users table where id equal to and let's say that id equal to 3 if I press enter deleted successfully again back to logs table reload this page and after reloading as we can see that the new record has been inside this logs table and get erased from this original table so successfully guys inside this video we had seen that what is the basic syntax to declare any trigger inside of phmi admin now by the help of this simple basic syntax actually we had created our first trigger inside this database and we have done one operation something called before delete inside the next videos we will see all options about trigger activation time as well as trigger event something called before update and all the rest dml statements called insert update and the delete so inside this video session guys if you have any doubt then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day